Joining me now is Chris Timmons, a former prosecutor who has tried RICO cases in both DeKalb and Cobb County, Georgia, and Melissa Murray, an NYU law professor and co-author of The Trump Indictments, the historic charging documents with commentary, which is now available for pre-order. Thanks for joining me tonight. And Chris, I'd love to start with you first. Scott Hall is kind of like the zealot of uh, the efforts to overturn the 2020 election in Georgia, at least as the reporting would have it connected to so many big actors in so many different plots, how damaging may he be to some of the co-defendants that are outlined in the, that are named in the conspiracy case here? Uh, well, you remember, Alex, when we talked about the carpet that you start at the bottom and you roll your way up? <laughs> yes. You look at Scott Hall in the indictment, he's the, the number two from the bottom. Um, so as far as the 19 are concerned, he's one of the least culpable. But what's interesting is that, yes, he's got a lot of dirt. My, the way I take this, and based on the way the misdemeanor uh, five-count indictment, re, or accusation, it's not an indictment, but the charging instrument in this case reads, he's, his plea is all about Sidney Powell. Uh, you know, she's the person who's listed as the person that's the co-conspirator that he allegedly conspired with uh, to overturn the election. And so that's how I read this. Um, now, it'll be interesting to see, as, as you mentioned, there may be additional information on individuals that are also in the indictment or perhaps in, even in other cases. And so the uh, other interesting thing is that the DA's office indicated that they did a recorded statement with them even before the plea. And what that tells me is they liked what was in that statement, which is why they took the plea. So if he backs up later on and says that something happened that didn't happen or vice versa, they've got that recorded statement. They can use it at trial to impeach him. Yeah. Just to follow up on the carpet metaphor for a second, Chris, is the sure. idea here, as, as you point out, Sidney Powell and Scott Hall are named together in, in, in the, the charging document, and he could be a real big problem for her. Would he be the kind of leverage you need to eventually flip Sidney Powell? I mean, because ultimately you do want to get higher and higher into the upper echelons of the Trump campaign or White House, right? I mean, you want to go all the way to the top, Alex. Your yeah. goal, anytime you draft a RICO indictment with 19 people on it, your goal is to plead every single one of them. That's not going to happen here. I don't foresee Donald Trump entering a plea in any of his cases. With regard to Sidney Powell, though, it's sort of an interesting situation because she is an attorney. Um, I'm an attorney as well, and I, I probably uh, keep too much of my self-identity wrapped up in the fact that I am an attorney, and most attorneys do, and I'm sure she's the same way. If she pleads guilty to a felony, unlike, you know, uh, Scott pleading to misdemeanors, she pleads guilty to a felony. She doesn't get to be a lawyer anymore. She's done. Um, so I anticipate, unless they make her a, a similar sweetheart deal that they made uh, to Hall, she's not going to plead. She's going to trial. And I don't think they're interested in making her a deal yet. We'll see. Um, you never know. I mean, it, you always are going to make a plea offer to somebody. But if it's anything other than a misdemeanor plea like uh, Mr. Hall got, she ain't, she's not going to be pleading. Yeah, I like the bit of self-awareness about attorneys being wrapped up in their identity as attorneys. Um, <laughs> we are. <laughs> Melissa, the fact— Melissa may agree. <laughs> the, the, the fact that— um, the fact that they're basically, as, as Melissa Redman, uh, a Georgia law professor and former deputy uh, DA in Fulton County, said, you'd have to assume— that they that that Scott Hall basically has the the receipts because they're offering him first offender misdemeanors and he gets to go on about his life and keep his business right does that indicate to you that like he must have something juicy for them to let him off with the charges he's pleading guilty to no, I think that's exactly right, Alex. Um, and not just stuff that might be juicy with regard to Sidney Powell. He also had the 63-minute phone call with Jeffrey Clark. And, I mean, Jeffrey Clark has a lot of liability in this indictment. Um, he is he is accused of sending a, or almost sending a false letter to Georgia, telling them that there was fraud in this election. I mean, so, again, escalating this idea that there was fraud and election interference. So there are a lot of people who are potentially touched by Scott Hall and what he could say and what he has said. And that's kind of the point of this sprawling RICO indictment. Many people criticized D.A. Willis for having such a sprawling indictment. We later learned that there were actually 20 other individuals that she also could have charged but declined to do so. But who she decided to charge here really is telling. This is a low-level foot soldier, but someone who has the goods on those who are higher up in the chain of command. And those individuals in the chain of command, if they in turn flip, can get you even closer to the head of this alleged conspiracy. Yeah, um, Chris, is it Rico? Is it, sorry, is it flipping season? Is that what this signals? Because <laughs> we know that prosecutors, I mean, they've signaled that they're going to make plea offers to Ken Chesbrough, Cheesborough, Chesbrough. It's still so unclear to all of us. Um, and Sidney Powell before their trial starts on October 23rd. 
I know your feelings about Sidney Powell accepting a plea agreement, but Kenneth Chesbrough? Is that a possibility? And a or too. Yeah, another another attorney whose identity is wrapped up in his his job. But do you, I mean is do. this the, <laughs> is this the beginning? You know, the number was 19. Now it's 18 co-defendants. Are we going to start to see that number tick down? Yeah, I mean, so their biggest value right now uh, of any of the other uh, people who are in the indictment is what evidence can they give against Chesborough? What evidence can they give against Powell? So it, it's kind of like evaluating when, when you're trying to figure out whether a, a plea offer coming from a defendant or, or a plea offer that you're making to a defendant is a good deal. You want to figure out, OK, what are they going to give me? And so you've got two cases pending and you're looking at it in two different ways. What are they going to give me against Powell? And what are they going to give me about and Chesborough and the, the case that's coming up on October 23rd? What can they give? me in the bigger case that's coming second. So if they don't plead before the Powell and Chesborough case, obviously they can't provide testimony in that case. And so the value of their testimony goes down, which means the offer that you give them goes up, looking at more time, looking at worse charges. So yeah, it is flipping season. You're actually absolutely right. And it's, it's got this time pressure because of these speedy trial demands, which is forcing those two trials to go to trial October 23rd. Those right. trials fall through. Then at that point, we've got more time. Yeah, October 23rd, October 1st is Sunday for everybody keeping track here. Melissa, also yeah. happening on Monday is the beginning of uh, New York Attorney General Letitia James' civil case against Donald Trump. And we have some confirmation from NBC News this evening that Trump, as in Donald, will be showing up to trial on Monday. What could go wrong here, Melissa? Donald Trump testifying in a civil case. I mean, the last time Donald Trump gave testimony in a civil case under oath, it didn't go well for him. And that was in the civil trial for E. Jean Carroll's rape, for, rape charges. Here, he's being asked to basically talk about whether or not the Trump properties were overinflated in terms of their value. And he's likely to say that valuation of properties is an incredibly subjective thing. People can sort of think about a wide range of factors and in going into the valuation of a property and that what he did was not unlawful. It wasn't intentional, on and on and on. He's also been called with members of his family as well. This is the damages portion of this trial. So the judge has already decided that there's liability here, and now we're proceeding to the damages part. It's a bench trial, so there's no jury here, just the judge. And again, Donald Trump is a loose cannon when sworn under oath. And so, again, the, the testimony that he gives here under oath can be used in other places. And again, we may have situations where he is called upon and answers questions in ways that suggest that he's very typically overinflating, making hyperbolic statements, and that could possibly be used in other pieces of litigation that are also looming for him, including these criminal cases. Yeah, I, I, everything he says can and potentially will be used against him.